Hello everyone, welcome to another Star Wars Old Republic video, and today we are finally doing the Dark vs. Light event. I have promised this video for many weeks now, and um, I actually have been going through it, and I've been recording a lot of footage and stuff, and, um, and I finally want to start making some videos about it. Uh, now there's a lot of Dark vs. Light event videos out there. What, what I'm going to do to try to differentiate my videos is, um, one, I'm just going to talk about some of my leveling tips, what I'm doing, what's been going on, and then the second thing is for every single video I post, I'm going to talk about a specific topic. And so I'm just going to have whatever's happening in the background after I've talked about the leveling tips and stuff, and then um, just talk about that topic basically. And today's topic is going to be how I got rich off an exploit. And I think this is going to be pretty interesting for you guys. And so um, I will talk about that later. But first, let's quickly talk about my first leveling tip, and that is legacy perks. Now, this is something that I have personally neglected for a very long time. I have leveled up numerous characters, and never on any single character have I maxed out my legacy perks. And uh, there's really no reason not to do that. And so this time around, I actually got to doing it, and it helped me so much when I was leveling. And so that's why I really want to quickly highlight it. For those of you who don't know, uh, Legacy is there, and Legacy perks are basically just rewards for you having leveled up more characters and for you having leveled up your Legacy in general. And once you've done so, you can unlock these Legacy perks. And what I'm unlocking on the screen right now are, uh, are experience boosts. So for example, if I, if I just keep paying a certain amount of money, I get like 6% stacks. And so for Flashpoint experience, for Warzone experience, for Class Mission experience, for Exploration experience, there's all these different types of experience boosts you can get, and it all stacks. So each for each level or each tier you buy, you have to pay a certain amount of credits, but each one gives you a 6% boost for, to a maximum of 30%. So if you're basically uh, using an XP boost that's already 25%, then you can have another 30% from this. You can have another up to like 45 or 50% from the Victorious Pioneers armor set, which you get from doing the Dark vs. Light event. So you can basically increase the XP gain by a, a huge percentage. Uh, which is going to help making those uh, leveling those tunes a lot easier. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the Victorious Pioneers armor set just yet. I'm just starting off with my first tune here, which is a Jedi Guardian. But what I am doing is going ahead and, and uh, maxing out my Legacy perk so that I have that XP boost, which is going to help me uh, level up a lot quicker than normal. And I've already leveled up uh, this character. This is, you know, pre-recorded footage, and so I can tell you from my experience, it definitely helped me level up. I mean, it helped me level up very, very quickly. The next quick thing I want to say is I did decide to level up a Jedi Guardian, only reason being I haven't leveled up a Guardian yet, and I want to obviously level up a Republic class because I have not completed the class story for a single Republic class. Like I literally haven't done it at all, and everyone has said that the Jedi Knight is one of the best class stories in general, never mind the best Republic class story. And so I decided to go ahead and level this one up. Uh, what's interesting is I started off this... Uh, event with wanting to play the story and then I literally stopped after like the first few planets because I realized I can level up just a lot quicker doing flashpoints and so it didn't even matter about the whole story thing but uh, but I probably will go on to playing the story a little bit later however for this one uh, the main way I'm going to be leveling up are war zones and flashpoints and so in this video I'm doing the first flashpoint that every Republic character has access to which is the Aselis or I don't know how you pronounce that the Aselis I think that's how it's pronounced all right, so on to the topic, which is, oh, before I get onto that, sorry, the first thing I want to quickly say is, you guys might notice on my screen here, I am keybinding, and for those of you who don't know, normally I'm a clicker, because I'm not too competitive of a player in general, and so I didn't really want to take out the time to learn how to keybind. However, I decided that since I'm leveling up a character all the way from level 1, it will probably be easier for me to just actually start learning to keybind on this character. And once again, I've already leveled this character up a lot, and at the point I'm at now, I'm actually very comfortable keybinding, and it's actually getting hard for me to click, because whenever I'm on this character, I obviously am using my keybinds, then when I go onto my Juggernaut, I actually find it a lot harder to click, and so I'm probably going to get to keybinding a lot more of my characters, and you might actually see some better PvP gameplay from me where I won't be clicking, I'll actually be keybinding. But how I'm keybinding and how I'm learning to keybind, that's actually going to be a topic for another video. For this one, I want to get on into the topic which I initially began this video off with, which was how I got rich off an exploit. Now before you guys start wondering, you know, oh wow, like are you admitting you use an exploit or whatever, it wasn't a real exploit, and you'll see what I mean later, but it kind of was, in, in the sense that Bioware found out people were using it and ended up nerfing it. But, uh, but it wasn't like officially announced in the forums or anything. But to give you guys some backstory, I was in a position that probably a lot of you are in now. It was uh, back when the Acolyte Shadows packs were first being released, so a few months before that. I was at a point where I was kind of in that range of 1 million, 2 million credits. 
And what I was doing was I was crafting, I was farming, and back in that time, w the way that we farmed was we would uh, farm chests. So usually there would be little roots on different planets, and you could run those roots where you just pick up a chest, move on to where the next chest is, pick it up, and each chest would only give you like 3,000 credits. So you can probably get a good sense of how tedious that was and boring. And um, it wasn't a very fun way to make credits, but that's what I was doing at that time. I didn't have any of the experience I have now when it came to playing the GTN or anything. But, uh, but the reason I was making these credits was because I wanted to buy cartel packs. So I was buying these cartel packs off the GTN, and at that point, cartel packs were actually reasonably priced. You could, pick, you could get a single cartel pack for anywhere from uh, 200 to 300,000 credits. And at that time, 300,000 credits was actually a very expensive price for a pack. Like that was just if the pack was super good. Normally you could get a pack for a lot cheaper than that. And hyper crates in general would sell anywhere from 4 to 5 million credits. I mean people were putting it up at like 7 million credits but they would often drop to the range of 4 to 5 million and that's when they would really sell. And, um, and so I wanted to save up for a hyper crate but I just wasn't even able to surpass that threshold. I was never really able to make more than 4 to 5 million credits and so I was never able to buy a hyper crate. Then I started using this, you know, quote unquote exploit, which actually ended up allowing me to make 15 to 20 million credits, and I used those to buy my very first hyper crates, and then that's where everything kind of shot off for me. So that's the point where I was able to uh, buy a, a ton of these Acolyte Shadows packs. I bought um, maybe anywhere from five to six hyper crates over the course of that time. I opened them and I sold the items from it and I made tons of credits and then I realized how profitable hyper crates were and I went on to then start uh, learning how to play the GTN and then I went on to make a ton of videos trying to outline how profitable hyper crates were. But, um, but yeah, so that's why I say I got rich off an exploit. Without that, I don't think I ever would have really made enough credits to buy like five or six hyper crates. But the, what the exploit was, was what I was doing at that time to craft was I was... Um, Sorry for stuttering here, I'm just trying to get the proper words out because what I would do was I would craft earpieces, okay? I, I, had, I had cybernetic, or what, oh god, what's it called? Cybertech. I haven't crafted for so long, all the terminology is just jumbling up in my head. I had cybertech, a cybermech, sorry. I had cybermech and I would craft earpieces. Then I would reverse engineer those earpieces and get an augmentation slot component. And then I would sell that augmentation slot component on the GTN, which was used by other people to make augmentation kits. And so augmentation kits are very, very good sellers because almost everyone who is a, a PVPs at level 65 or PVEs has to augment their gear. And so that's why augmentation slot components sold very well. So I would use, so what I would do is I would have to use two of the tricopper flux two of the Teradium and two of the Mithra. Those are what the higher end level crafting materials were, the highest you could get using scavenging. And that would, and each of those you could usually sell for anywhere from 800 credits, so let's say 1,000. So basically I would sell, um, I would use all of those and I would be able to sell the augmentation slot component for 5,000 credits each, okay? So I was using those higher end crafting materials to, to make one augmentation slot component and then sell that for 5,000 credits. And it was a very time consuming process. And even then, like, I later realized that I could probably just sell the crafting mats, like just sell the Mithra, Teradium, and Tricopper Flux by itself and make as many credits as I was making selling the augmentation slot components. And that would even save more time. So it just wasn't a very profitable venture in general. And, um, and then I realized that instead of crafting an earpiece, and then, you know, it took like a good 25 minutes to craft an earpiece, and then reverse engineering that earpiece, and when you have to reverse engineer hundreds of items, it is so tedious and boring. And so that was even more time wasted, and then getting all of those, I could craft a droid part. So there was a droid part I could craft that costed even less than what the earpiece cost to craft. So I could craft that droid part. And then, didn't have to reverse engineer the droid part or anything, I could just sell that droid part to a vendor. And that vendor gave me 8,240 credits for every droid part I sold to it. And I don't think that was intended whatsoever because there was nothing that uh, sold to a vendor for that high of a price. What was even more of an exploit was that 
uh, the materials I was using to craft each droid part, I could get those materials off the GTN for anywhere from 3,000 to 4,000 credits. So basically I could have this unlimited chain uh, or cycle where I would go on the GTN, buy a ton of crafting materials, craft these droid parts, and then just sell them straight to a vendor. It totally reduced the amount of time I had to spend crafting because I didn't have to waste any time reverse engineering or anything like that or even waiting for GTN sales. I didn't have to put stuff up and hope that it sells or have to worry about people undercutting me or anything. I could just go to any vendor and sell it and it would take two seconds. And I was selling each of those droid parts for double of what I was making back when I was trying to sell those augmentation slot components. So just to quickly recap, what I was doing initially was I was having to spend a lot of time crafting these earpieces. I realized that I could actually spend less of my crafting resources and less time by crafting these droid parts, which I could just straight up go and sell to a vendor for 8,200 credits. And I basically did that uh, for a period of anywhere, I, I think it was like three weeks to a month. I went ahead and did that. I made millions upon millions of credits. And it wasn't easy. It still took a ton of time. You can imagine I had to go on the GTN, buy a whole bunch of these stuff, and you know, I'd still have to craft the droid part. And that was a green droid part, so it took about six, seven minutes to craft a single one. But what I did was I went ahead on different characters and I um, deleted whatever crew skills they had then, just got scavenging and tried to get more materials and, and tried to have all my different tunes working with one another in order to make as many of these as I possibly could. And I made a ton of credits. Uh, and it, it's not really an exploit in the fact that they weren't easy credits and also it, were, it wasn't many. Like, think about the temp temple chair exploit where people were able to make hundreds of millions of credits just, you know, doing basically nothing. In this case, I was only able to make like two, 20 million credits in a month, which someone might laugh at right now. But then again, it's inflation and everything. It's a lot easier to make credits now than it was a few years back. But, uh, but 20 million credits was a ton, and I, w I bought all these hyper crates, and everything kind of shot up. So that's kind of how I got rich off an exploit. Um, uh, then I realized in that in a recent patch, or it, I think after the month had you know expired, there was a patch or something, and Bioware actually ended up nerfing it. So uh, you can only sell that droid part to a vendor for, guess how much they nerfed it for? 2,000 something credits. So you could only sell that droid part to a vendor for like 2,000 credits afterward. So it goes to show how this uh, ability to sell this droid part to a vendor for 8,000 credits was totally not intended because uh, Bioware nerfed it by 6,000 credits. But nonetheless, it was definitely a golden age for me. It's what allowed me to kind of go up, bump up in price and actually be able to afford these hyper crates because I wasn't going to pay real money for cartel coins or anything. And, um, and really, the only way I was able to get them was credits and off the GTN. And I was having such a hard time you know, trying to make credits at that time. And uh, luckily, I, you know, just by stroke of luck, I found out that this was happening. And I'm not sure how many people were using it, but it's kind of interesting that it was only after I started using it for about a month uh, that Bioware actually ended up nerfing it. And so I'm wondering if it was my activity by my character that actually brought this to Bioware's attention or whether it was an ongoing problem that Bioware always intended to nerf when this patch hit. Either way, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the topic for today. Let me know what you think in the comment section. And uh, maybe if you guys have any suggestions for future topics for my videos, I'll actually take those into consideration because I only have a few topics right now, but I have many Dark vs. Light event videos that I want to put up. And, um, and so if you guys have suggestions for topics, I'll definitely take a look at them and consider them for future videos. But I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll see you in the next one.